Um, Dr. Jerry, can you explain the link between exercising and how it affects our mood? Yes, Vignes. Um, there's a lot of research on this. Um, the big picture is that it's been found through large-scale epidemiological studies that people who are active, physically active and exercising, are less depressed than people who, uh, who are inactive. Um, also, supporting this link between uh, exercise and mood, people who have been active and stopped being active tend to be more depressed uh, than people who keep or maintain an exercise program. So it's not something for just dipping in and out of, but maintaining as part of healthy life. Um, what is not really fully understood is how exercise lifts mood. Um, there are theories about it. One of the theories is that uh, exercise can, for instance, um, alleviate chronic depression by increasing serotonin. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter um, that uh, supports the growth of neurons. So by increasing serotonin production, this theory says that um, exercise produces new growth of neurons, new firing of neurons, <clears throat> and that changes uh, the way the brain is functioning. Mm. Another theory, and I don't think they're incompatible, I think that you know they could be all part of the same story, is that exercise helps by normalizing sleep um, because people get uh, you know, tired, they burn up energy, and so they sleep better when they exercise. And sleep is known to have protective effects on the brain. Um, and uh, a bad night's sleep has been found to reduce immune health um, by up to 70%. So sleep, immunity and exercise as a link to sleep, they all go together. Mm, I see. So yeah, as you, as you mentioned, exercise isn't something you try out and you just leave it. It should be part of our lifestyle. It has to be. The body needs it. We're designed for it. We've evolved from people who, who didn't call it exercise, who just moved as part of their lives, who hunted, you know, who gathered firewood, who so on. That's in our evolutionary history. Um, so uh, the body is really designed to be moving uh, and to be challenged in movement. But there's also, and that's, you know, challenging movement we call aerobic exercise, but there's also anaerobic exercise, uh, which is uh, integrative exercise, which we can talk about as well. Okay. Um, one problem about exercising would be the fear of falling. And this, I believe it normally occurs uh, among the older generation. And yeah. there's also news about how it can become a mental health issue. Sure. Um, that's an important point, um, particularly during this COVID-19 period where people are confined inside um, and, you know, thinking of ways to exercise. And, you know, one of the ways might be running up and down the stairs if your home has got stairs or if you're in an apartment building running up and down the, um, the fire escape. Um, but if, if people are older, they're not going to want to do that. Um, and uh, with, with older people, you'll be aware that there's a risk of falling. People fall over, um, their coordination is not so good, and often um, they have weak bones from osteoporosis, which is um, due to a lack of calcium absorption in the bones, and the bones become brittle. Uh, and so people, older people fall, they can break a hip or they can break the wrist when they put their hand out to break, to stop a fall. And then uh, that leads to a fear of falling. People think, oh, if I go outside, then I will, what if I fall and no one finds me? Or what if I break a wrist or a hip? If I've already had one fall, I might fall again. And so that leads to people staying inside and not moving because they're afraid. We've already heard uh, inactivity is associated with depression. People get depressed. They don't want to go out to the shop and buy food. So their nutrition goes down. And there is a very high link between falls in older people and uh, quite early onset death 
after a fall. Mm -hmm. There's a rapid decline in people's mental and physical health. Um, what can we do about that? Well, um, one of the things is that, and of course you're in Asia now, um, there are different forms of exercise and yoga and Tai Chi have been found to restore balance to people. There've been a lot of studies on Tai Chi and falling in the elderly. Tai Chi is a form of uh, meditative um, exercise that comes from China, but it's been adapted in other parts of particularly East Asia and Vietnam, mm. um, but has become popular now in uh, fitness centers, um, in wellness programs globally. And what's been found is that people who practice Tai Chi regularly, because it's all about keeping balance as you move, um, they are able to catch themselves if they're falling and restore balance and get themselves out of a fall. And so now the American and the British gerontological societies, that means doctors who specialize in aging, both countries uh, recommend uh, tai Chi as the best way of preventing falling in the elderly. So that's not aerobic exercise, that is anaerobic exercise, which is very integrative and creates balance and links the, the brain and the body in a way um, that we want to improve mood, improve health, improve immunity, and correct any uh, falls or lack of balance that might be there. And that can be done at home, inside. So during this uh, COVID-19 quarantine period, can you give us some tips for to incorporate exercise into our schedules or some tips on how to explore this deep, like for example, Tai Chi and yoga, how do you explore these different types of exercise? Yeah, well, just for aerobic exercise, uh, if you can go out, uh, if you're allowed to exercise, in some countries you can't. Um, I'm in Australia at the moment, and although we are under lockdown, um, we are allowed to go out and exercise. And people can exercise if they keep a distance of one and a half to two meters uh, in twos. Um, so you can run, you can walk, you can uh, swim, um, and so on. Um, but if you're confined to home, there are exercises that you can do. I know uh, one of my friends in Kuala Lumpur um, has got a skipping rope, uh, and he skips with a skipping rope on the spot in his apartment, and works up a sweat with that, and that's aerobic exercise. It's also related to balance because you're moving from foot to foot like that at quite a fast pace, and it's just on the spot, one spot. Um, another thing people can do is they can run up and down the stairs in their fire escape. Uh, you're probably not going to bump into many people in the fire escape unless they're doing what you're doing. Yeah. And then you can step aside and let them pass. Mm -hmm. But um, that's a good way of getting exercise. And of course, as you go up the stairs, uh, you're exercising all the muscles for climbing mm -hmm. uh, that you would if you were out hiking. Um, you can do that at home just by simply having uh, a step, a box that you can do stepping on as you might in a gym, up and down and up and down and up and down like that. Um, the old fashioned way of doing push ups uh, is a very good way of developing upper body. And if you're using your, your feet and your toes to lift yourself up, whole body exercise as well. Um, all of these, you know, particularly push ups. You can see online, uh, you know, there are lots of YouTube examples of how to do that. You can do weights at home. If you don't have weights, you know, you can uh, lift bags of rice. Uh, you can lift bowls of rice. Yeah. Um, anything that gives you weight, uh, we can improvise. You know, we're creative beings. Uh, the weight is the issue, not the weights. Um, and then for yoga and Tai Chi, there are many, many uh, online lessons in uh, beginners uh, steps in learning yoga and Tai Chi and uh, it's a very good thing to do and to incorporate into one's activity after COVID-19 because it balances mind and body, uh, brain and physiology and also links in immunity. I guess 
this time calls for all our creativity and resourcefulness. Definitely. Yeah.